Yo guys, welcome to Wales, welcome to the veg garden. You can probably hear it in my voice, I'm feeling a bit under the weather. I'm kind of exhausted to be honest with you. I just had the hardest few weeks of my life. My pop-up restaurant, Nana O's, it was super tough. Working so many hours. Glad I got it done now and it was success, but it took its toll on me and I definitely need some time to recover and I need to recuperate and fill my body with some goodness. So this is why I'm filming this video today. As much as I just want to sleep, I just want to show you guys some recipes and some things that I like to do when I'm feeling like this to try and perk myself back up. So hopefully they're going to help you. What I like to do is take advantage of my lovely veg garden. If you don't have a veg garden, just get so many lovely fruits and vegetables into your diet when you're not feeling too good. Today, I'm gonna make a lovely dish using this chard. I've got so much chard and loads of it I served at Nana O's, but I wanna use it today in quite a quirky way, actually. We're gonna be making some enchiladas with the chard. So rather than using a tortilla, we're gonna use their big ginormous chard leaves as the wrap, essentially. We're gonna fill it with some goodness. So let's make that first. I know as soon as I've had one mouthful of that, I'm gonna be feeling better. First up, we're gonna make this lovely sauce for the enchiladas. I'm gonna get some vegan butter melting in my saucepan. Then I'm gonna add a chopped onion, some minced garlic, and then a load of spices. Some ground cumin, some ground coriander, smoked paprika, dried oregano, dried thyme, and a bay leaf. So you just want to let that sweat down and all those lovely spices just infuse into that butter. I'm going to add some salt which is going to bring out some more of those flavours. Next I'm going to add a little gluten-free flour, stir it in and that's going to thicken up the sauce. Stir in some tomato paste and chipotle paste, then deglaze the pan with some vegetable stock. Let the sauce simmer away and thicken up for about 20 minutes. Meanwhile, we can make the filling. Get some oil in a non-stick pan and add some sliced onion, yellow pepper, some mushrooms, I'm using portobello mushrooms, and some black beans. So to season this up, I'm gonna add some fresh coriander and some soy sauce. So our sauce is done and our filling is nearly done. I gotta go and pick my wrappers now, my charred wrappers. Now, of course, you can just tinker this recipe and use tortillas, but I'm gonna use the chard to make it a little bit more healthier and just because I got so much and these leaves are ginormous. See what I mean? That's like the biggest chard you'll ever see. Unbelievable, I've been saving it for this recipe. Ah, oh, if I was on a beach right now. So another ingredient into the pot of making me feel good is from today's sponsor, Athletic Greens. I've been drinking their AG1 before breakfast each morning and it's become a real morning ritual. As someone who researches healing ingredients from around the world, I was super impressed by everything Athletic Greens has packed into AG1 and how convenient and tasty the drink is to enjoy. All you have to do is add a scoop to eight ounces of water, give it a good shake up and enjoy. It tastes really good and it's easy to drink. For me, AG1 is like a nutrient backup plan. I know it's supporting my immunity containing 75 vitamins and minerals and even healing mushrooms. Plus, it boosts my energy, making relying on coffee a thing of the past. It contains a natural form of B12, biotin, bioavailable folate, and magnesium. AG1 is vegan, paleo, and keto friendly. So go to athleticgreens.com forward slash avantgarde vegan to get started on your first purchase and receive a free one year supply of vitamin D and five AG1 travel packs. So guys, I wanna say a huge thank you to Athletic Greens for supporting the channel. It means we can keep making these videos and I'm gonna keep taking AG1 because it is epic. It's an amazing product. And if you want some of your own, just click the link below this video in the description box. I can't recommend it enough. I'm gonna finally chop the charred stalks and add those to the filling pan. And I'll save the leaves to use as my charred tortilla. To finish the filling, I'm going to stir in some of the lovely sauce and some rice that I pre-cooked. So 
let's build these charred enchiladas. I'm gonna get a little bit of sauce in my roasting dish first, and then simply fill the charred leaves with the filling and some vegan cheese. These look absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna get some sauce over the top, a little pinch of vegan cheese and some salt, and then get it into the oven. So they've been in the oven for about 25 minutes. Let's get them out and give it a taste. Oh yes, look at that. Beautiful. Garnish with a little green salsa, some fresh coriander, and some crispy onions. Me and you, cow. Me and you. If these flavors don't perk me up, I don't know what will. Some lovely spices and some tangy sauce. Tangy sauces, sorry about my pet cow. Let's give this a taste. Let's see how good a charred leaf is as a tortilla. It's gotta be good though, because I grew it myself. Mmm, summery, fresh, tangy, spicy. Oh, wow, this is actually really, really good. The charred works really, really well. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Good, isn't it? Yeah, really good. So whenever I'm feeling stressed or anxious, I like to make a little herbal infusion. Making my own tea. There's something quite ritualistic about it, actually. The whole concept of pouring a freshly brewed tea. It's beautiful. And especially when you've grown the ingredients yourself too. So I grow things like lemon balm and chamomile and calendula, and I have nettles dotted around and mint. And you can grow all these things just on your windowsill or just in little pots and they look beautiful too. So I'm going to collect some calendula, some lemon balm, some chamomile and some mint and pour a nice little pot of tea and it's nice and relaxing. A couple of ingredients I also recommend adding too for a calming tea. You can get hemp leaves dried from all good tea shops these days. Something called Damiana as well, which is amazing to add to tea. It's got a lovely lemony flavor and some amazing health benefits as well. So let's make a nice pot of tea. So sleep is so important to me and it should be important to you. When I was doing the pop-up, my sleeping schedule went out of the window. I was, do I was sleeping probably like four hours a night and working like 15 hour days. It was tough, but I'm trying to get my body back on track now. And something that really helps me is having teas like this, getting that chamomile and lemon balm and nettle or hemp. These ingredients are really calming. They'll calm your anxiety and they'll help you wind down at the end of the day and settle you down and making sure you're gonna get a good night's sleep. So incorporate them into your diet. It really helps me. When I'm not feeling myself, the one thing that I like to eat mostly is a stew. Nothing more comforting and hearty than a stew. And this one in particular is invigorating, inspired by Jamaican and Caribbean stews. I'm gonna show you how to make this Caribbean stew with dumplings. The first thing to do is finally chop some spring onions and I'm harvesting my own. Also finally chop some ginger, garlic, and a scotch bonnet chili. Now, I couldn't grow any Scotch bonnets this year, so I'm just using some red hot chilies, but to make it have that authentic Caribbean taste, make sure you get a Scotch bonnet if you can. Then slice a red pepper and get them sauteing in a pan. Throw in some chopped sweet potato, then a courgette, which I've just cubed. Look at the size on that. <laughs> After sweating the mix down for a few minutes, throw in some Caribbean curry powder and a pinch of jerk seasoning, plus some sea salt and some tomato puree. Let that cook down for a few minutes before deglazing the pan with some vegetable stock and some coconut milk. 
I like to add some fresh thyme and a bay leaf for the aromatics. And then I throw in some cooked mixed beans just from a can. Let the stew bubble away for about 25 minutes. And meanwhile, we can make our dumplings. I've got some wholemeal flour here. I'm just gonna add some baking powder and a cup full of water plus a pinch of sea salt. Mix the ingredients to form a lovely dough and give it a knead for a couple of minutes. If the dough is a little wet, add some more flour and if it's a little too dry, add a splash more water. Then form your dough into some lovely dumplings. Now I'm forming them into spinners, which is super simple and the popular way to make them in Jamaica and the Caribbean. Wow, that looks bloody amazing. Comfort food at its finest. Get my kale on top and then just get the lid on and the steam and the heat will just cook that through really gently. Okay, let's serve up for me and the boys. This is gonna revitalize us. I'm gonna serve it with some chopped mango, spring onion and fresh coriander. and then just top the stew with a sprinkle of cashew nuts. Mm, just what I need. Look at this celery, this is my dream to have all this celery. Celery is one of my favorite ingredients, not only to use in the bases of sauces, stews and soups and things like that, because it adds great depth, but also because it's so nutritious and I like to juice it. Wow. Wow, look at that. That is a beautiful bunch of celery. This is only the second bunch of celery I've ever harvested. And it's actually super easy to grow, I've found. And look how much is there. In the supermarket, you get tiny little bunches of celery, but that is huge. When I'm feeling down or I need to pick me up or just any time to give me a boost to my immunity, I like to make juices. And juicing celery, along with things like carrots and beetroot and ginger and apple, is something that I do often, or with whatever homegrown vegetables I have. But even before I had this garden, I used to juice just with organic veg that I'd get from the supermarket. Juicing is a great way of cramming a load of nutrients into a single cup rather than having to just eat a load of veg. Also, they can be delicious. Experiment with different flavors and uh, you'll find one that you really like. Try not to cram too many sugary fruits or vegetables into your juices as most of the fiber is removed during the juicing process. I don't want to end up with a juice that's super sugary. So that's why I add lots of celery and cucumber and other less sugary vegetables or fruits. That celery is so refreshing, unbelievable. Mm. Sun on my face and a cold, fresh juice is nothing better, nothing more uplifting for me. And any waste, any pulp from making the juice, add it to your compost heap if you have one to grow more food in the compost. It the compost heap loves that stuff because it's already broken down. Absolutely delicious. So there we go. There's a few things that I like to eat and do when I'm not feeling too good. I hope these tips help you. There's so many more, so I'll do another video like this. But one thing that does really help me is being outside, being in nature, being with my pumpkins, being in the garden. So if I can give you any advice is go for a walk through a woodland, go to the park, be outside. It will perk you up and obviously exercise will help too. But look at these lovely pumpkins. I just want to draw some attention to my pumpkins here. We'll have to do a video on these pumpkins. And if you haven't seen me grow a giant pumpkin and make some incredible recipes with it, check out my video that I made last year when I grew a ginormous pumpkin. We named him Timothy. It was so funny. Go and watch that. 
And guys, if you want more shorter recipes, head over to my Instagram, my TikTok. I've been uploading some 90 second recipes that you will really love. So follow me on there at Gaz Oakley or at Chef Gaz Oakley on TikTok. See you there. Subscribe to the channel, please help us grow. Bye bye.